Hello guys and welcome to part 3 and our final part of the rapid revision on the nervous system. In today's part, we'll be coming across the last few parts of the chapter which are very interesting and important for your examination. So let's get started. So let us just have a small mini revision of what we did in our last two rapid revision videos of the nervous system to know where we stand right now. So like y'all did see in the last two videos, the nervous system is divided mainly into two parts, which is your central nervous system and your peripheral nervous system. All right, the central nervous system comprises of two main parts, which would be your brain and your spinal cord. And your peripheral nervous system which comprises of all the nerves that are connected to your central nervous system is again further divided into two main parts, which would be your somatic nervous system that is responsible for all your voluntary actions and your autonomic nervous system. That is responsible for all your involuntary actions like breathing, etc. Uh, your autonomic nervous system is again further divided into the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. All right. So. These were the main divisions that we did come across in our previous rapid revision and we did also see in part two of our rapid revision that the brain comprises of three primary regions which would, which would be your cerebrum, your cerebellum and your medulla oblongata. Okay, so now from here we are going to be delving into the spinal cord to begin with, all right? So moving forward, guys. So speaking of the spinal cord, all right? The spinal cord being one of the main components of the central nervous system extends from the medulla oblongata right down to the backbone, all right? And the arrangement of the gray matter here, I hope you'll remember that the gray matter in the brain is on the outside and the white matter is on the inside okay that is when it comes to the brain but in case of the spinal cord the gray matter is on the inside do you remember this guys and the white matter is on the outside all right so do remember this in case of the brain the gray matter is on the outside and the white matter is on the inside but in case of the spinal cord it is reversed and the gray matter is on the inside and the white matter is on the outside all right so do remember this and speaking of the functions of the spinal cord it is responsible for all your reflexes below the neck all right and it conducts sensory impulses from the skin and muscles to the brain and it conducts motor responses from the brain to the muscle and limbs all right so do remember these three main functions and do remember when it comes to the spinal cord the gray matter is on the inside and the white matter is on the outside all right so let's move forward now the peripheral nervous system, it is again divided into two main parts which is the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. And previously in our revision classes we did see that the somatic nervous system is responsible for all your voluntary actions while your autonomic nervous system is responsible for all your involuntary actions like breathing etc. 
all right here we are going to be talking about the components of these systems the somatic nervous system consists of two sets of nerves that would be your cranial nerves and your spinal nerves now your cranial nerves are those nerves that emerge from your brain and there are 12 pairs of these that are present in your somatic nervous system while your spinal nerves that emerge from the spine are 31 pairs and present in the somatic nervous system again so remember this guys the two main nerves that are present in the somatic nervous system would be your cranial nerves that emerge from the brain and your spinal nerves that emerge from the spine cranial nerves are 12 pairs and your spinal nerves are 31 pairs all right and every spinal nerve is a mixed nerve having both sensory and motor fibers so remember this as well y'all can get a fill in the blank or an mcq of what a spinal nerve is and whether it is a mixed nerve that consists of sensory and motor fibers or whether it consists of only sensory or motor fibers all right so keep that in mind coming to your autonomic nervous system your autonomic nervous system consists of a pair of chains of nerves and ganglia on either side of the backbone all right so again the peripheral nervous system divided into two main parts which is the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system speaking of the functions your somatic nervous system is responsible for all the voluntary actions and your autonomic nervous system is responsible for your involuntary actions all right and speaking of what they mainly consist of the somatic nervous system consists of 12 pairs of cranial nerves that emerge from your brain and 31 pairs of spinal nerves that emerge from your spine all right and the autonomic nervous system again consists of a pair of chains of nerves and ganglia on either side of the backbone so let's move forward the autonomic nervous system which is a division of your peripheral nervous system and responsible for involuntary actions is further divided into the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system all right okay my head is doing some <laughs> involuntary drawing here but yeah coming to the point sympathetic nervous system here the nerves arrives from the spinal cord and they are present between your neck and your waist all right and this system actually prepares your body for any sort of a reaction to something that is stimulated from your external environment so like you all can see it prepares the body for a violent action against abnormal conditions so it's just like a very anxious and a very defensive system you can say your parasympathetic nervous system on the other hand is more like a chill system you can compare your sympathetic nervous system to that of a panic system because it's always like oh my god something is up and something's going to happen so i'm just going to be like ready for it in advance while your parasympathetic nervous system is more like dude can you like chill out and relax kind of system all right so this can be compared to a chill out system having said that the nerves from the sympathetic nervous system arise from the spinal cord and they are present between your neck and your waist and it prepares the body for violent action against abnormal condition while your parasympathetic nervous system has nerves above the neck and below the sacrum the sacrum is near your waist region all right and it re-establishes normal conditions after the violent act is over so it basically calms your body down and is responsible for relaxing your body after your body has dealt with something that is abnormal so moving forward reflexes a reflex can be defined as an immediate or quick involuntary action in our body in response to a stimulus all right guys see now y'all would know that our body is capable of 
having two main kinds of actions that would be voluntary and involuntary. All right. So what would be the difference between a reflex and a voluntary action? While well, you all saw that reflexes are involuntary and you know you have voluntary actions as well. Reflexes are initiated by a stimulus that can be, you know, by pain, touch, pressure, heat, light. Like, uh, you know, if you're suddenly exposed, let's say you're traveling in a car or in a bike and from the opposite direction, there's this other car or bike that is coming whose headlights are like blaring in your face. So you would like close your eyes, right? Because of the sudden light that your eyes are being exposed to, it does hurt your eyes. So that would be a reflex action or, you know, pain, like if you suddenly touch a cactus, so you are going to take your hand off that. So that would be a reflex action and it is mainly self-protective due to the environment. It, the commands of a reflex action mostly originate in the spinal cord, your ANS, that's the autonomic nervous system and a few in the brain as well. Okay, They involve muscles and glands. And an example of a reflex action would be shivering or your eyes tearing up when your, you know, when something goes into your eye. So these are a list of your reflex actions. While voluntary actions would be initiated through, now this was an involuntary action by my head. Uh, voluntary actions are initiated by a willing thought, okay? Something that you do willfully, like if you want to eat a piece of cake from your fridge, you take it out of your fridge and you eat it, right? So that is a voluntary action or if you want to reply to a friend's text, you would take your phone and you would reply. So you typing would be a voluntary action. And a voluntary action would be the fulfillment of a desired goal. When I say goal, it's not like getting 98% of intent or 99 or whatever you all wish to. I mean, that would be a voluntary action and you all should have that. But here we're talking about small things like, you know, uh, maybe going and you know, doing anything that you like or you kicking the ball or you hitting your sibling just because it gives you a pleasure of some kind is a voluntary action. Uh, the commands of the voluntary actions do originate in the brain. And yeah, an example I did give you like eating a piece of your favorite cake would be a voluntary action. All right. So let's move on. The types of reflexes would be natural that are inborn, like, you know, even a baby sneezing like nobody taught the baby how to sneeze so that would be an inborn reflex and you have conditioned or acquired reflexes all right so examples of your inborn reflexes would be like sneezing salivation swallowing because nobody teaches you that you are born with those reflexes so these reflexes do not obviously need any prior experience like who's got to teach you how to sneeze or yawn. Natural inborn reflexes do not require anybody to teach you how to go about them like they are inborn okay like nobody teaches a newborn baby how to sneeze or cough so they don't require previous learning and these reflexes are inborn like I said example of these would be blinking, coughing, sneezing, like salivation in your mouth, swallowing etc etc. All right. And these are mainly due to functional efficiency. While your conditioned or acquired reflex, it's the one that develops during lifetime due to experience or learning. These reflexes are not inborn and are hence called acquired reflexes. Watering, that is salivation on the sight or smell of your favorite food is an acquired reflex. So I hope you all did get the difference between your inborn reflexes and your conditioned or acquired reflex. All right. So moving forward. Now, some common reflexes in humans. Speaking of your natural inborn reflexes, a knee jerk. Let's say you're walking around your house and you suddenly hit your knee on the cot. Okay, that's a very common thing that happens. At least it happens to me. So you are going to be like, ow. So that would be like a common inborn reflex. Closing of your eyelids, coughing, sneezing. All right. Speaking of your condition or acquired reflex, playing a musical instrument, seeing the teacher entering the classroom, you stand up, right? So that is an acquired reflex. So you playing an instrument is an acquired reflex. So these are a few common reflexes you do come across in your day-to-day -day life, all right? So 
let's move forward guys see so sometimes there has to be a faster message route in your nervous system for a quick reaction okay there might be some reactions that require a quicker message medium so in that case the brain is informed a little later maybe a millisecond later so that is what is called a reflex arc okay so that is when a reflex arc comes into the picture it doesn't mean that the brain is not informed of course your brain is informed but your the message goes to your spine your spine already knows what to do and sends back the message to the effector muscle telling it what to do and then the message is also sent to the brain already to see what further action has to be performed if at all it has to. So let's say you touch a cactus here, okay? So the sensory receptor that is here on your finger sends the message to your spinal cord over here, all right? And the spinal cord immediately, very fast, sends the message back to the effector organ to take the hand off the cactus, all right? And then later, the sensation is relayed to the brain for the brain to again make a decision on whether there has to be any further action that is taken or not. So that is what a reflex arc is. So basically it is just a shorter and faster medium for faster communication and reaction, all right? So moving forward to the final part of our final rapid revision on the nervous system, we have a small progress check. Let's see if you all can answer. Do pause and answer guys. So fill in the blanks by choosing the correct alternative given for each, all right? Brain and spinal cord are the parts of the DASH nervous system. Is it the central, is it the peripheral, or is it the autonomous? It is the central nervous system. So the brain and spinal cord are the parts of the central nervous system. So this would be your answer. DASH is the largest part of the brain. All right, guys, I didn't mention this in the second part of the rapid revision of the nervous system. It would be your cerebrum. The part of the brain concerned with the body balance is dash. Is it your cerebrum? Is it your cerebellum? Or is it the medulla oblongata? I hope you all remember that I did say that the reason a drunk person walks, you know, in an imbalanced way is because the alcohol affects his cerebellum, all right? So here the answer would be cerebellum. The cerebellum is responsible for the balance of the body. Given below, are a few common reflexes in humans. Classify them as simple or conditional reflex. Your knee jerk would be a simple reflex. Watering of mouth on seeing a favorite dish. It would be conditional. Tying off a shoelace while Talking again. Conditional. Closing of eyelids if a strong beam of light is flashed across. Simple. So with that, we come to an end of our last part of rapid revision on the nervous system. I hope you all did get to learn and revise a lot with these sessions and revise, take care, and always have responsible fun, guys. Thank you, and stay tuned for our upcoming videos. Let's crack it.